Hey everybody, welcome to the overview video of Soundseed Grain, a granular synthesis plugin for WISE. So the way that this video was made is we're going to start with a finished sound in Soundseed Grain. We're going to listen to it and then we are going to recreate it in this tutorial. So let's get started with hearing the final sound. Very quick thing I want to mention before we get started with anything is that you will want to have Start Capture here in your main toolbar activated so that real-time display works in the interface of Soundseed Green. All right, so first thing we need to do is to create an instance of the plugin Wise Authoring and then import a sample. So to open Soundseed Grain from the Project Explorer, you can right-click, New Child, Soundseed Grain. And this shows you the main interface of the plugin. All right, so then we're going to click on Browse, select the sample we want to work with, click Open, and there you have it. So Soundseed Grain's user interface is composed of different sections. The grain section controls how many grains you're playing per second. It's also where you can shape your grains and set the duration for each grain. Then, the playback section determines the play position in your imported audio file. This is also where you control the pitch and speed of each grain. The filter section is where you control the filters available in Soundseed Grain. And lastly, the modulation section is where you have access to the embedded modulators in Soundseed Grain and where you assign them to various properties. You can also notice that there's a positioning section and an output section. So those two sections and how to use MIDI and markers with Soundseed Grain, we're gonna keep for a separate video. So now that we are already set up with an imported sample, let's start designing our sound. So let's go to the source tab where we can edit our source. So this source is a bit long and can be trimmed to the section that you want. Trimming your sources will have the added benefit of taking less memory in your sound banks as only the selected portion of the source will be kept. So what we will do is we're going to trim to the section of the sample that we want. Then we're going to apply fades. And then right click and select the shape that we want for the fades. All right, so let's listen to the result and see if it's what we'd like. Sounds good. All right, so we're done with editing our sample, so let's return to the main effect settings section here. What we want to do now is to input how many grains we want to have playing at one time. You have three modes to choose from. First one is how much time separates each grain emission. Second is how many grains are triggered per second. And the last one is MIDI controlled emissions per second. So in this case, we're going to choose emissions per second and input 40. So after emissions per second has been set, we will input the duration of each grain. So we have, again, three modes to choose from. And the first one is duration multiplier. The second one is the duration of each grain in milliseconds, as well as MIDI controlled time duration. So let's select duration and input 50 milliseconds. Next up is amplitude. And amplitude is a parameter that you can use if you want different volumes per grain. In our case, we will leave it at full amplitude, which is 100. Next, we will change the grain attack and release. For attack time, input 50 milliseconds. Notice that the release parameter is grayed out. That's because it's linked to the attack parameter. If you want to input a different value for release, click on the link unlink button here and input your value for release. What you can also do is to move these handles in the grain visualizer window and adjust your attack and release time from here. Lastly, you can choose different envelope shapes for your attack and release. Let's select raised cosine. So as you might have noticed by now, the grain visualizer window here will provide visual feedback based on the different settings of sound scene grain. Let's move on to the playback section. In this section, we will change the pitch, playback speed, and position of our grains. First, the position property is where the grains play from based on the source. When applying modulation, you can use this property as an offset. You can also grab the position flag here and move it to where you'd like. In this example, we'll leave it at zero or its initial position. Pitch and speed both can have the same audible result since they both operate on the same property. One is in sense and is more suitable to use when you need sense or semitones. Pitch also affects the speed at which each grain plays. Speed, however, does have one added feature. 
that can play grains in reverse. Speed is a multiplier and also affects pitch. Offset and root note are used with MIDI and markers, so we will be covering those in a later video. For this video, we will set the speed property to minus one so that our grains play in reverse. When using negative values on the speed property, the sound will play in reverse. Next up is the filter section. This section is pretty straightforward in terms of customizing your filters, but there are two important things to mention. First, the filter property is applied to each individual grain. That means that if the property changes between grain emissions, the newest value will be applied to the filter of that grain. Second, is that when looking through the type list, you will notice that there are 12 dB per octave slopes available for the high pass and low pass filters. One more thing is that we have access in Soundsync Grain to a smoother slope of 6 dB per octave. Let's select the bandpass filter from the drop down menu here. We will keep the Q and frequency as is for now because we will be interacting with those properties by modulating them in the next section modulators. On the left is where you'll be defining your modulators. On the right is where you'll be applying modulators to sound seed grain properties. Let's set up our first modulator. From the waveform shape drop down menu here, select the random waveform shape. After that, frequency from the next menu over. Then input 100 hertz, and we are all set to attach to a property of sound seed grain. In this case, in the right panel here, I will select position and then attach it to modulator one, which is the modulator we just set up. Let's listen to the result. So basically we have a very fast oscillator with a random waveform moving the starting position of the grains. Without a smaller range, you can see that it plays from any position in the source. It could be the effect you want to achieve, but for this example, let's restrict the range of the modulation to be closer to our initial position. We can do that in two ways, either with the output on the modulator, or we can restrict the amount that can be modulated on each property. Let's go with restricting the output of the modulator that we just set up. We could do it like any other parameter in Soundscene Grain while playing the sound, like so. But in this case, I know that the value that we want is 0.5. So let's input 0.5. We can move the position head to a point where there's a little more sound to hear and play it again and see how it sounds. We're getting pretty close to what we want. Make sure to note that this approach of restricting the output on the modulator will apply down the line to any other property that is attached to be modulated by that modulator. Let's configure one more modulator and modulate in sync the emissions per second property and the filter cutoff property with it. For mod two, we're going to choose a sine waveform, keep it to frequency and give it a speed of 0.5 Hertz. Then, we're going to assign emissions per second to the modulator that we just created, which is mod two. And for the amount, we're gonna input 1.5. With this value, we have a very slow oscillating emission rate for the grains. Let's listen. And now we're gonna add the filter cutoff property, assign it to mod two, and give it an amount of four. So the units for amount change depending on the property that you assign. So you can use the property help window that you see on the left right now to know more. We also want to set the default value for the filter. So we'll do so here and input 800 Hertz. Let's listen to how that sounds so far. Pretty cool. If ever you'd like to listen to the sound without certain modulating properties, you can press the bypass modulation buttons next to each property you add in the left panel. For example, this is the sound with the filter cutoff property that we just added, 
being toggled on and off at playback. All right, so since we're almost done, one thing I do want to mention is that the source that we imported into Soundseed Grain for this example was a stereo source. So in the output section here, you will want to set it to stereo before your final listen, because it'll sound much better. All right, let's give it a go. That's it. So I hope this video was insightful for all of you and that it'll help you get started with Soundseed Grain. So until the next video, thanks everybody.